Hello guys, welcome to Neural Breakdown. Today we are talking about multimodal models. Recently, large foundation models like OpenAI's GPT-4, Google's Palm 2, and the very recently released ImageBind by Meta all have shown incredible results in integrating visual inputs with text to perform various multimodal tasks. These tasks could include text to image or video retrieval, cross modal generation task like captioning where we input a visual and generate a description. There is also visual grounding or localization where we input an image and search for an object as a text query. Meta's segment anything model which I have covered in this channel before can segment specific portions of images using multiple types of inputs like text, bounding boxes, mouse clicks and more. Another cool use case of multimodal modeling is in visual question answering or visual dialogue where models are asked questions about an input image or video and it has to bridge the gap between the inputted question and visual context to generate an answer. A couple of months back we had this crazy neuroscience paper which collected brain functional MRI scans and used a GPT model to predict what the humans are thinking in natural language given the auditory input that they perceive and showed that the AI can guess what the human is thinking about 50% of the time. Another work is this Be My Eyes technology that uses GPT-4 to assist individuals with blindness or low vision to provide auditory feedback describing the world around them. As you can see, multimodal learning is a fast growing space of AI research and in my opinion the next big milestone that's going to bring the next leap in intelligence is going to come from this area. Note that this video is not going to cover generative image or text to image models like DALI or stable diffusion that deserves its own video and I plan to do one maybe next month. Instead, this video will cover the key ideas behind training neural networks that can learn from multimodal inputs and the basic concepts and solutions in this evolving field. Concretely, I'm going to go over 10 important research papers over the last few years that will broadly cover most of the different approaches in the field, their advantage and disadvantages and the many innovations they have brought over the last few years. I've deliberately picked methods that use images and text because I think those are the easiest architectures to develop the most intuitive understanding of the topic. If you like this video and the content I'm producing on this channel, like the AI breakdowns and the AI devlogs, please consider subscribing. Your time, interactions, feedback mean a lot to me. You are all magnificent. So without further ado, let's begin this new episode of Neural Breakdown. In multimodal settings, the input data can include information from multiple modalities such as text, images, audio, video, heat maps, 3D volumetric data, anything. The goal of multimodal modeling is to learn the dependencies and relationships between these different input types and then align each of them to a joint representation space where these different modalities can effectively interact, enhance and complement each other. A common first step is to independently embed each of the input modalities through their own appropriate neural network to form these unimodal embeddings. This means that we can choose to use an RNN or a transformer to embed a sentence as a sequence of tokens and a CNN or a vision transformer to embed an image or the male spectrogram of an input audio sample. Following this, we have a fusion step that fuses these unimodal embeddings into a new joint representation space that allows for cross-modal interactions. These fusion could be additive or multiplicative, a concatenation, an outer product, or most commonly, another neural network. After fusing the two representations, we train the neural network on a predefined task to align these embeddings via backpropagation. In other words, we take a data set, we forward pass the data through the network to receive an output, we calculate the loss of the network's output to our target solution, and then we update all the weights in the neural network to optimize the alignment of this joint embedding space. The choice of this training task often dictates what network architecture, loss function, and data sets we use for training. One family of such tasks is discriminative training. Discriminative training is an approach where the model is trained to distinguish or find similarities between the different modalities in the input data. They are often trained to learn a specific decision boundary 
and optimize on a single task, for example, to match captions with correct images. The earliest paper that we are going to talk about today is this amazing work from 2014 where they train the model on this image text matching objective. The data set is the Flickr 30K which contains 30,000 images and their text captions. During training, they separately process the caption texts with an LSTM network and the paired images with CNNs to form these unimodal embeddings for both sources and then use contrastive training to align them. Contrastive training is a technique which increases the dot product similarity between matched input image text embeddings and lower the dot product of unmatched pairs. This essentially trains a joint embedding space where the embeddings of paired text and images are close to each other while being further away from dissimilar ones. They showed some incredible results for cross-modal retrieval. For example, if you search the nearest image embedding of the text sailing, you're gonna get images of sailing. They also show one of the coolest results ever of doing vector arithmetic in multimodal space, where they subtract the embedding of the text plane from an image of a plane, then add the text embedding of a bird, and searching for the nearest image returns images of birds. What? Clip is OpenAI's version of contrastive pre-training on a new dataset that they created called Web Image Text, which contains 400 million image text pairs. After training, the model can input an image and a list of candidate captions and then output a confidence score for each of the captions. Clip demonstrated zero-shot learning, meaning it could recognize objects even though it wasn't directly trained on it. Pretty cool, right? Recently, we got the image bind paper from Meta, which combines multiple multimodal sources like images, audio, text, depth, heat maps, IMUs into a single model. It is not possible to acquire a dataset large enough that has matched inputs of all these input types present together. So, what image bind does is to learn this single shared representation space using contrastive learning. They train to align images with text images with audio, images with heat maps, and show that by doing this on a large scale, modalities like audio and text are also aligned. This resulting model is crazy. It does cross-modal retrieval like inputting an image of a dog and retrieving a barking sound, or inputting an audio of a train running and retrieving an image of a train. They also show vector arithmetic like prompting the audio of a dog barking and an image of a beach and then retrieving an image of a dog sitting on a beach. That's crazy. I don't even believe all this, but... So contrastive learning is great when it comes to aligning paired data. But another method to align multimodal datasets is masked visual language modeling. In Visual Bird, instead of using entire images as input to the model, the authors first split up the image into multiple regions using a pre-trained object detector. This sequence of region embeddings is passed into a transformer self-attention model along with the image's description, but random tokens from the text section is masked or replaced randomly. The network then has to process this entire input to guess what the masked description tokens were. This process of perturbing the input sequence with masked tokens and training the neural network to reconstruct the original input is called masked language modeling. If you're unfamiliar with how transformers or BERT or attention work, feel free to check out my previous video where I cover these topics in more depth. At a high level, the self-attention layer in the encoder holistically processes the entire sequence of image region embeddings and text description embeddings by contextualizing each of the tokens in the sequence with each other such that each token, visual or text, learns which other tokens to provide the maximum attention to. Also, by splitting the image into specific regions, we also learn the dependencies of specific text tokens in the descriptions with specific regions that appear in the image. A concurrent paper called Wilbert also uses mass language modeling, but they train two separate self-attention transformer encoders, one for the image, the other for the text. After each self-attention layer, they include a co-attention layer where the embeddings of each modality learns to attend to the embeddings of the other modality, exchanging information between the two modalities at each transformer layer and learn more and more complex dependencies with each 
layer. Both WillBird and VisualBird are excellent pre-training techniques that can learn image and text representation from volumes of data. These learned embeddings can then be used for further downstream tasks by fine-tuning them on specific datasets and tasks such as captioning, visual question answering, image text matching, and more. So far, we have talked about discriminative modeling that tries to align multimodal input by training them on a single task, such as contrastive learning or masked modeling. But training on a specific task like question answering or captioning still requires fine-tuning these models with a separate network. In contrast, unified modeling aims to combine multiple datasets together and train a single model on diverse tasks like image captioning, mask filling, visual question answering, and more. This makes the model learn generalized embeddings that can be used for a wide range of downstream tasks and also combining multiple datasets together makes the total training data much larger than any single contributing dataset could have made. The blip model trains a unified model that jointly optimizes on three objectives. First, a contrastive loss where the image and text embeddings are processed independently like clip. Second, an image text matching task where the text embeddings are processed with self attention and the image embeddings are used as cross attention to do binary prediction whether the input image and text are a positive pair. Thirdly, an autoregressive language model is trained combining causal masked attention on the text and cross modal attention with the image to generate captions token by token. Notice that these three models share the same layer weights across each architecture so these weights are trained to be generalizable and applicable for all three tasks. Blip achieves some great metrics on the three tasks it was trained on but we can also transfer learn to other downstream tasks like visual question answering and visual dialogue by using these pre-trained weights and adding small layers on top to fulfill the target task. Another example that follows a similar multitask objective is the hero paper. They work with a dataset containing videos and their subtitles and train an attention-based model on multiple tasks like mask language modeling from text, masked frame modeling where we output the most relevant frame from the video given an input word, frame order matching which inputs frames from a video in random order and arranges them correctly and video subtitle matching which inputs a subtitle prompt and provides the likelihood of the video frames that it corresponds to. Another model that has a slightly different take is the VLT5 or the VLBART model which converts multiple tasks into a sequence to text task and uses a transformer encoder decoder architecture to generate natural language outputs. The encoder inputs the representations of multiple regions of the image obtained through an object detector and special region ID tokens along with a sequence of text prompt tokens. It then encodes this entire input into a joint sequence of embeddings using self-attention. The decoder then applies attention to the encoder sequence and auto-regressively generates the response one token at a time. A technique like this allows us to generate captions with free-form text and even allows us to train on visual grounding where we train the model to output the image region tokens like this. So far the models we have discussed have mostly been training the text and image encoders from scratch. However, the early 2020s to 2021 was an era where we were moving towards large scale generative language models like GPT-2 that were trained on gigabytes of text data. Basically these models were trained on next word prediction tasks meaning they were able to generate the likelihood of the next word given a sequence of prefix words. These models were demonstrated to have encyclopedic knowledge by learning to model natural language and generate fluent text when prompted correctly. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could transfer all that knowledge of a generative text model into a multimodal setting? That sounds enticing on paper, but it actually imposes some tricky practical challenges. For example, taking an LLM that has already been pre-trained on gigabytes of text and then fine-tuning it on a smaller, noisy image captions dataset can lead to something called catastrophic forgetting, where the LLM just forgets things it has learned during pre-training in favor of over-optimizing its weights to the current task. In 2021, the frozen paper addressed this 
LLM fine-tuning problem by freezing the weights of a pre-trained 7 billion parameter generative LLM and only training the vision encoder. A ResNet encodes the image which is rearranged to form a sequence of embeddings, each having the same dimensions as the token embeddings of the pre-trained LLM. This sequence of embeddings is inputted into the LLM as a prefix or visual prefix and the image caption is generated one token at a time. Since the LLM weights are frozen, the gradients only update the weights of the vision encoder. Frozen showed some really cool zero-shot transfer to multiple tasks on unseen data like identifying objects or answering questions about the images. They also showed some few short abilities where they passed random names of images into the model as prompts and the model is able to categorize the new images accordingly by looking at the inputted prompt. Of course, if you can use pre-trained LLMs, why not also use pre-trained vision encoders as well? That's what the Flamingo paper does. Their text encoder is a pre-trained LLM trained on next word prediction and their vision encoder is a ResNet model pre-trained on good old contrastive loss on an image text captions dataset. To align these two independent pre-trained models into a single multimodal model, they do the following. The vision encoder output is passed into a perceiver network, which maps the image or video embeddings into a fixed sequence of embeddings. Perceiver networks are neural networks that uses cross-attention mechanism to efficiently map inputs of arbitrary sequence length into a fixed sequence length. It compresses the number of tokens reserved for visual embeddings and compresses the input to its essential content, making the size of the embeddings independent of the image or video resolution. This allows Flamingo to input high-resolution visual inputs that will otherwise be impossible. For the LLM model 2, each transformer layer is kept frozen and new trainable gated cross-attention layers are introduced between each layer that conditions the language model on the visual embeddings. This approach is pretty cool because it does not try to update any of the learned LLM weights but instead adds new weights in between each transformer layers to add information about the visual content. While training, the network only updates these image perceiver layers and the cross-attention layers to align these two universes together without needing to throw away the pre-trained weights. Smart, right? Flamingo shows some truly crazy results on zero-shot tasks like captioning images, answering questions about multiple images, describing actions from videos, all in zero-shot. But what is even crazier are the few-shot tasks. The encyclopedic knowledge of LLMs as well as the image understanding of the pre-trained vision encoders are very evident. For example, prompting the model with images to read signboards, answering general knowledge questions, predicting the future of a video sequence, responding in a foreign language, and engaging in visual dialogue shows the power of few shot learning. We can pass in examples to the model at inference time and it gets conditioned to output in the same format to new inputs without ever needing to fine tune or retrain the model on those specific use cases. A similar approach is adopted by Mini GPT-4 which inputs the embeddings of a pre-trained vision encoder through a simple linear layer into a pre-trained LLM while Cosmos 1 from Microsoft is also able to do a bunch of cool stuff like IQ tests, explaining jokes from images, and chain of thought question answering. The Palm E model by Google uses their text-only large language model called Palm to train embodied model for robotics use cases. Embodied language models are the type of model that also learns the physical presence of the AI alongside language. This means that the multimodalities explored in Palm E extend beyond images and text but also state vectors of the robots or its environments like the size, color, positions of objects. For performing the robotics planning and tasks, they provide the relevant multimodal prompt and generate a plan with the LLM. A low-level policy, which is not part of the LLM, then translates these instructions into actions that generate new observations, which gets passed into the model as another multimodal prompt and update the existing plan. And this allows the robots that host Farm E to carry out complex actions, plan visual tasks, and even react in the face of unforeseen obstacles and adversarial disturbances. The field of embodied language modeling with multimodal input is fascinating in terms of what it can do for AI in the future.
It might transform the way the robotics industries operate in many cases and should be a use case to keep an eye out in the upcoming years. Generative multimodal language models especially are a powerful tool with the ability to retain vast knowledge and allowing the user to condition them through visual and textual prompting and few short examples. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.